Welcome to the show, Dr. Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, I know you have a busy whirlwind uh, tour with uh, the Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East, so thank you for making time with us. Thank you so much for your invitation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, there's so much going on in the world around us. You, you, s you recently came from Paris, and there have been attacks there, as well as in the Middle East, in West Africa. Um, what are your reflections on all of this chaos? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, look, I, I think that uh, it's important to look at the situation the way uh, it is and to take stands or stances on what we know. Uh, and also to have the political analysis because we have to avoid being emotional. We have to be, uh, avoid to be uh, being uh, uh, confusing the whole uh, dimensions. Now, from an Islamic perspective, we know that we have some trends and some Muslim brothers and sisters who have the wrong interpretation of what Islam is. And this is where we have a moral duty as Muslims to take a stance and, and to say that's not our religion, these are not our principles, and to challenge this. But to keep on repeating, you know, it has nothing to do with Islam, this is outside, okay, that's fine. But the moral duty of Muslims, when you have somebody who is talking in the name of Islam and saying, I'm killing innocent people, and this is the right, uh, we have the right to do, th to do so, we, we have to take a stand. So the, the religious side on our, uh, and this is what I said uh, in after, uh, September uh, 2001. This is what I, I said in what happened in Bali, in, in Casablanca, in Jordan, in London, in Madrid. We have to take a stand and, and this is what I did also after Charlie Hebdo in Paris and then also now uh, with what happened. At the same time we have to add something which is uh, the political situation that we have now and to try to get a better understanding of the complexity of what is happening because uh, um, when, for example, Tony Blair said in 2005 there is no relationship between our foreign policy and what happened in London, in ethical terms he was right, nothing can justify killing innocent people, but in political terms he was wrong because uh, uh, there is a foreign policy coming from the States, there is a pol foreign policy coming from Britain, from France, and from Fran France is bombarding Syria. So we also have to, 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 to take with some political questions. So Tell us what you are doing in Syria. Tell us what you are doing in Mali. Tell us what you are doing uh, in uh, uh, countries where you are bombarding innocent people. And we know what happened even in Afghanistan before. So it's not new. So there's a political angle. There's a religious angle. Yeah. Is there also a military angle? Because a lot of Western militaries now are saying we're going to increase our airstrikes against ISIS. So, so, so this is, is a connection to the political one, which mm -hmm. is the, the consequence of what happened is just to listen to uh, um, François Hollande, the French president, speaking in a way like Bush uh, uh, 14 years ago, saying we are going to show them that we are not scared, we are going to bombard, and then it's, it's, uh, they are increasing even the, the, uh, uh, their in military involvement in, in Syria. So I think that this is the wrong answer to what I is happening. Uh, so this is where we, we need to have this uh, 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 understanding of a position of principles mm -hmm. when it comes to religion and a pr position uh, and uh, to take a political uh, or, or to be involved in the political analysis to try to understand what is happening because uh, uh, this kind of ex violent extremism is not coming from nowhere. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's after the uh, American intervention in, in, uh, in Afghanistan that we had more in Iraq exactly the same and uh, now we have it in uh, also in Syria with this kind of, uh, I, I wrote this four years ago saying there is an agreement between the American and the European countries on the one side with the Russian and the Chinese uh, on the other side not to agree on Syria and this is what we have now 150 people being killed every single day now as an average in, in Syria that's unacceptable so let me start with the religious side and maybe come back to the political. Mm. Well, on the religious side, Muslim scholars have been unanimously condemning ISIS for many years now uh, and, and terrorism, but it doesn't seem to be working. So what needs to be changed in terms of the, in terms of the religious approach? Uh, th there are many levels. There is, of course, the, the uh, uh, 
PR exercise based on our moral duty to condemn and to say this is not acceptable. Not on the ground, we also have to be involved in more education with our brothers and sisters. We have to be at the grassroots level dealing with uh, uh, Muslims, letting them know also that the knowledge is not coming from internet and not coming from Google, not coming from this informal way of being educated. Uh, so this is the first level of education. The second is also to be quite clear about our positioning uh, when it comes to some of the trends. I think that we have an accepted diversity in Islam. So we have uh, uh, the literalist, the traditionalist, the reformist, you have the mystical trends. All this is accepted in Islam. But we also have to uh, 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 advise some of our brothers and sisters when they come with a very uh, uh, binary way of looking at the reality, literalist way, what we call today the, the Salafi and the Wahhabi, the, the, the it's the right, wrong word, the Wahhabi, but it's what we call Salafi within the tradition. But it's Salafi al harfiya which is the literalist Salafi, and they are nurturing this mindset. We are better Muslim when we are against the other. We are better Muslim when we isolate ourselves from the other. So this mindset, if you know how to play with it, you can push people towards something which is confronting. Mm -hmm. I am defining myself against, but then I'm becoming assertive against in a way which I can use violence. So, so, so the Salafi literalists are not violent mm -hmm. and we respect but them, but, it but can the, be mindset, exploited to the mindset to could be uh, exploited, mm -hmm. uh, not feeling that you are at home, that you are alien to this country, you are not Canadian. And what Daesh is doing is nurturing this. This is why they are doing what they are doing now. It's to let the people understand they don't like you in Europe, they don't like you in the, the States, they don't like you in Canada. So because they don't like you, now come, come with us. Your true home is is Dar al-Islam and Dar al-Islam is the so-called Islamic State. Mm -hmm. It's us. And I think that we have to confront this uh, and, and keep on uh, doing our uh, educational process and uh, institutions within the community. But there is something uh, also very important in religious terms, which is to be open to the surrounding society. In mm -hmm. fact, paradoxically, what we are doing outside is coming back with positive impact inside. So if you have people with whom you work, people of other faiths, uh, people who are Jews, Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, with no religion within our society, and this is also something that we have to do here in Canada or we have to do in the West, add to this what should be done in Muslim-majority countries where we have to be self-critical. There is a lack of understanding of our religion, a lack of in-depth uh, study. It's very superficial, very formalistic sometimes. And, 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 and very much in, uh, in an understanding which is uh, 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 the negative way of dealing with our identity, which is against the other, which is not what Islam is all about. Mm. That's quite a lot to, to, to chew on, but let's quickly switch angles back to the political mm. side and say, mm. how, if, if airstrikes aren't going to you know, put an end to ISIS, what will do the job? Now, I, I think it's, it's more complex than this. I, I think we cannot just extract Syria from the whole business. And, and I, I said it in 2003, nobody uh, took it seriously when George W. Bush said we need to uh, uh, democratize the Middle East and, and look at what happened. And this is where they lied about uh, uh, Iraq and by saying that they were uh, weapons of mass destruction. Nothing was true in what they did. In fact, they went to retaliate against Saddam Hussein because of his father and at the same time to protect uh, oil resources. And this is what they are doing. So the Iraqi pattern is uh, uh, weaken the political regimes or the political systems, divide the people and protect the uh, uh, resources and this is exactly what is happening so look now what in Libya exactly the same uh, the geostrategic situation of Yemen no oil but very important to put uh, or to destabilize even and or to uh, uh, scale uh, uh, the Saudis in what they are doing is, is to destabilize the region and this is what they have been doing now also in uh, in the region so I would say that uh, uh, contrary to what we think, they are not looking for uh, an immediate solution in Syria. The destabilized Syria is, n uh, is helping or protecting or promoting some of the geostrategics of uh, the US, even of Russia in the region. First is what we call low-intensity conflict. 
So it's there, it's within the borders, it's this destabilizing Turkey, which was becoming very strong just before. It's uh, protecting, while we are talking about Syria, we are not talking about the ongoing colonization of uh, the Palestine in the West Bank and what is happening with the, the, uh, uh, the boycott uh, of Gaza. This is now going on. So you have to, you have to look at the whole picture and, and uh, uh, it helps also to sell weapons and to protect the oil resources. So it's very cynical. Mm -hmm. So they don't care. And, and this is where we, wherever we are, Muslims or Western Muslims living here or living in Muslim majority countries, we really have to start with clear principle that humani our humanity is one humanity with equal dignity for every single life and that the life of the Syrian is not less than the life of the French people and this way of uh, covering with all the media around the world what happened in Paris and forgetting what happened in Beirut, forgetting what happened and even now what is happening in Mali or, or what is happening that's just showing how much we are normalizing something which is close to dehumanizing mm -hmm. some of the people around the world. And we, with our message, this is something which is unacceptable. Ya ayyuhan nas means all of us. Khayrukum and fa'akum liman linnas. The best among you is the one who is the more useful to humanity, towards humanity. So we have to come with this voice. We have to, to show. And then in Syria, and this is a political stand, and in Syria to say, how come you can just let it go like this? And, and add to this the silence of the international community of what happened in, in Egypt with the coming back of the military, with putting all these innocent people in jail and killing so many and torturing. And, and this is what is happening there in there out there. What should we so be telling our governments, uh, you know, the Canadian government, to do about uh, Bashar al-Assad, about other dictators in, in the Middle East? Look, you know, uh, what happened with the last election is great in Canada. Uh, I'm always saying to be better than the previous one is not difficult. But what the promises and the hopes that we have as to the domestic policy with this openness, it's good. But this should not be at the price of not questioning the international and the foreign policy. Uh, this uh, unconditional support to Israel should be uh, questioned by saying, no, there are conditions protecting the life of the innocent and asking also the government, look, we cannot solve the problem by bombarding uh, population in Syria. We have to take a stand on the region and also to take a stand on the way things should be solved. So, so now uh, Bashar al-Assad is a dictator. So to play with shall he stay or not, it might be that now we have to deal with him for a while. But principles should be clear. Stop supporting dictators and stop being passive when people are killing themselves because of what we did, because of what the West did, because of the way we went to Iraq, because of the way we were uh, uh, promoting so-called democratization. So we have to, we are, uh, we should uh, uh, hold to account all these people who are now coming. So what you can expect from your government is, okay, you gave us very much hope about what could be the future of us living together in the country. Now the only way for you to go forward is consistency. Show us there that you are you stick to the principles, that you are faithful to some of these principles that we are sharing, and uh, to come to something which is, uh, yes, we are against the dictators, and yes, we'll find a solution. It could be a transitory period uh, where the people are stopping killing themselves and to solve the problem in Syria being involved with all the forces there because it's not going to come from the West only. The most, the big problems that we have in the Middle East are not coming from the West, are coming from the Arabs, are coming from the governments and the corrupt governments. So we also have to, to be quite clear on the fact that we need uh, uh, the civil society, the intellectuals and the politicians to be involved also in the Middle East. It, it can all seem very bleak for young Muslims here I in Canada or in the West, you know, looking at the, the Middle East picture, there's so many different players, many of them are very cynical, mm. um, uh, and, and it feels sometimes hopeless. You know, we can't, there, there are hundreds of thousands of people dying and we yeah. can't do anything about it. 
So uh, what would your message be to young people about how they can do something positive? First, uh, to never lose hope. That's the starting point. If uh, uh, we have it in the Quran, if the people are coming to you, all the people are gathered against you and say, Hasbunallah wa ni'ma al -wakil. So this not losing hope means that, yes, we can find that or we can think it's not going to change. People are killed every day. We should not lose hope because any, anything could happen and it could happen quite quickly. But at least with not losing hope, stick to the principles and be vocal. You know what I'm hoping to have is young Muslims who are not losing hope but are courageous. Yeah. Courageous means with all what you have, access to education, freedom every day of your life, the, 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 the space to speak out and to be heard. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you speaking out? Are you the voice for the voiceless in your society? Uh, have you understood that from the very beginning, the Quran is coming to the Prophet ﷺ and asking him, look at the poor people, look at the oppressed, change your way of looking at things. They were invisible, now they have to be visible. Why? Because through their visibility, you should be visible with your principles. In fact, by the way you look at the oppressed and the poor, the way you treat them will make your principles visible in the society. So where are we? In Canada, this is what we want. We want the people to come and to be the voice for the voiceless. You came here, you settled in Canada just to take advantage of the situation, make a salary, make money and to forget about the world? Or did you come, your fathers and mothers and the generation, or did you convert to Islam to be the voice in this society of the, the oppressed? Because uh, a Muslim, the spiritual take of the Muslims on earth is confident with your principles, at peace with yourself, but courageous with the world. Courageous means I'm here to change this world for the better. الَّذِينَ إِنْ مَكَّنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَةِ آتَوُ الزَّكَةِ وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَأَنَّهُوا عَنِ الْمُنْقَرِ This is what we have. We pray, we give the money to the poor because this is their right and then we change the world, resisting, uh, promoting what is right and resisting what is bad. Where are we in this? And then this is my message to the young Muslim. And don't tell me, oh, you know what? I need no more education. I need my spiritual life. This is the spiritual life. There is nothing like a spiritual life which is isolated from the world. The Prophet ﷺ never did this. He was praying during the night, he changed the world during the day. We have to be this kind of people where we are. This is the added value of Muslims. This is our moral distinctiveness wherever we are, is to be courageous. I'm, I'm afraid and, and sometimes I'm worried about some of the young Muslims and these new generations of Muslims, very bright, very visible in their society, but you know how they are visible? Because they are following the same path of so-called success, money and visibility with money. This is not what we want. You can be rich, you can, th that's, there is nothing wrong to be rich uh, with being rich. What is wrong is to be rich and coward. It's to be rich and silent. It's to be rich and to lose your principles with your uh, wealth and everything. So let us hope to have some young uh, brothers and sisters to be courageous, courageous. And there is this cr courage is be at peace with your heart, which is don't die not having supported justice on earth. Don't die not having supported uh, dignity. Because this is the mercy. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ You are a mercy. This is what Allah is saying about the Prophet. We, we sent you as a mercy. Doing what? إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَلْ God is commanding justice. Uh, this is the first dimension which is important. And excellence is this forgiveness that we want also beyond this. And then also وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَ بَنِي آدَمْ We give dignity to human beings. So this is where with this, all this situation I would say our wisdom is uh, to try to find this inner peace and to uh, promote this outward courage. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. Ramadan, so much. for sharing your insights and, and your message uh, with our viewers. Allah ibarik fiqh. Rabbin ibarik. Wa yastur, inshaAllah. Ameen. Ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Shukran. Barakallahu